Recording. What? Recording. I'm recording at the same time. Yes. Yes. Last time I did this is when it didn't save the sound. So we'll we'll, we'll hope it's the best. Okay. Five uh, A. Determine the speed of light in a block of glass with refractive index. 1.5. So does anybody remember the formula I need here? Sin I over sin of. Uh, not that one, the other one. It's, yeah, N equals the velocity. Actually, why don't you check the formula to see this yeah, if you look at page 5, you can see it. N equals... Now, what does he want? He wants... V. V equals C over N. What's the C? 3 times 10 to the A. And what's the N? Please calculate. No, don't. Please just. <laughs> Bilal, are you writing anything down? It's two times ten. Two times ten. Thank you. How many marks for that? Two. Now look at that beautiful diagram. Yeah. Amazing. So you have a ray of light, it enters at angle 40, hits the prism. The term the angle the ray makes with the normal as it leaves the prism. So whose rule is that? Uh, Our good old friend, Mr. Snell. Right. Mr. Yes. Snell. What's the name of this dotted line here? Normal. Oh yeah, I forgot about you actually. Yeah. Uh, where have you been? Where are you? Oh, you were mumbling something to me about EAP or something, weren't you? That's a good one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, normal. Now, what's the angle here? Nine C four three. This one here. Forty. And then it comes out at a different angle. And we want, hey, come on. He wants the angle that it makes as it leaves the prism. So actually, I'm going to redraw this. <coughs> it's less ugly. <coughs> okay. Can, are you ready? I'm waiting for you. Now, in red is the light. So it comes in here, and the angle to the normal, 40. And then it leaves at some angle. Uh, I'll draw it here. This is going to be so terrible. Here. Um, the angle is here, I'll call that one or one. And then what happens when it hits this? It goes up. It changes the angle again. So I'll draw it like... No, 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 no. I'm going to draw this bigger, okay? Bigger. Bigger and better. Now that's a prism. Right. It comes in. Let's try this again. It comes in, hits here, then changes angle. So it goes down. No. No, it changes the voice in the middle. Yeah, in the middle it changes. Like it's prism, it's it's not a mirror. It's a dim. This is so annoying. Right, goes down and then it goes hits up. something. Hits up. and it goes up. Goes up and goes up. 
and then goes this way. Something like that. Uh, no, it no, goes down. No, 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 look carefully. Yes, carefully, yes. Go straight up. It goes this way. Then comes down, and goes up, and goes straight up. <sighs> Thank you, Omar. <laughs> No, 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 no. I tell you what's confusing you. I tell you, hey, hey, I'm explaining now. What's confusing you is that you're thinking this line here is the ray of light. It's not. He's just drawing that to help you find the angles. Okay? It's the normal on the way in, and it's the normal on the way out. So, we have to so in blue, I'll draw the normals. So there's the first normal. That's blue? Yes. And there's the second normal. 120 and 60. Okay. No, 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 just concentrate. Concentrate here. In red, that's the light going in. It hits here. Now because, here's the hint, because this is the normal, it means this is where the light leaves. So it hits here and then it goes this way. Okay, and then it deflects again. Uh, wouldn't it deflect upside? Yeah. Like, yeah, because the light is coming in like this way, right? It deflects, then goes on. You know, I don't think it really matters actually because I'm just drawing this to help you label the angles. So I don't really care. I just want to label them. Okay, so here, what's this angle? 40. This angle? X, I'll call it. This angle here? Um, this is also... I'll give it a different letter. Why, why are you doing this to me? Why? <laughs> and then here, go on. What do you think is the next one? Why do you have my paper? Okay, Snell's Law, firstly. Sine 40, yes, over sine x equals 1.5. Thank you. Please get me the X. <laughs> get me the X. No, don't just sit there looking stupid. <laughs> get me the X on your calculator. 25.37. Yeah? Shh. Now, we know the x, yes? And we know this angle, yes? yes no. So can we get the y? Yes. No. How? Yes. yes. So tell me the y. 34. 34.63. Great. Now, finally, let's use Snell's law on this piece again. Yes. The next person who annoys me will be going out via the window. <laughs> okay. Snell's law on this piece, so what have we got? Sine. Sine, well give me the letter. Sine y. Sine y over sine z equals equals now it's not 1.5 because remember the Snell's law experiment you did where it was water to air and air to water? This is air to glass and yeah. glass to air. So it's not 1.5 on the way out. What is it? 1 over 1.5. So uh, what's y here? And what's said? That's what you're looking for, isn't it? Okay, give me the set, please. Fifty-eight point four seven five. Fifty-eight 
8.475, so 48 degrees, which is correct. Okay. B part 2 now. Explain what is meant by total intern reflection and critical angle. Who can tell me what total internal reflection is? When, oh, when the angle of incidence is bigger than the angle of reflection, the light ray reflects inside the object. Yeah, I'll give you what they have, but whatever you want in your own words. So, total internal reflection occurs when a ray is traveling from a more dense material to a less dense material, and the angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle. There is no refracted ray and all of the light is reflected internally. Uh, so I don't think we, we didn't have any experiment on this because we didn't get time to use the little, little prisms. Um, but but I, I do you want me to write all of that down or? Well, this is just the definition that you can look up. So I'll write it here for you. Definition of <coughs> internal, yeah, <Reflection>. internal <coughs> reflection. And then, now, maybe you remember this one. Definition of critical yeah. angle. What's that one? Yeah, what is it? <laughs> Did you say the angle when the light is reflected by something? No, no, no. Right. So, okay, what do you think it is? When the angle of reflection is degrees. Yes. The critical, the critical angle is the angle you need to make on the incidence, so that that the reflected angle is ninety degrees to the normal. Yes. Did you get that? That's the critical angle. The angle you need to go in at, so that it comes out at 90. 90. Yeah? But that's the definition too. Okay. Uh, what's part three now? Oh, the term the critical angle. Okay. So, like we said, Sine I over sine R. What's the R here? 90. That equals uh, sine I. Well, I here is what's the name of the I? It's the, it's the angle you want. It's the critical angle. So sine C over sine 90 equals 1 over... 1.5. Can you tell me what the C is, please? What is it? Okay. Next. Uh, hey, a purple light, um, a purple light source consisting of red and violet, is uh, incident on the prism, as in the diagram. The refractive index is greater for violet light than it is for red light. Sketch the path of the red and violet rays as they pass through the prism as they leave the prism. So he's saying that you have a red light and you have a violet light. And he says the refractive index of glass is greater for the violet light than it is for the red light. Okay, so basically what's going to happen here, if you go back to the diagram, is you have the two lights, red and violet, that go in here. But when they come out, they would be like this. They will be at two different directions. Here will be red, and here will be violet. Now, 
the way you can remember this is, do you remember um, with Newton? Do you remember this with Newton? So he puts the light in and then what happens? Yeah, he gets all the colours here, doesn't he? Newton did this, yeah. And the colours are actually the colours of the? Rainbow. Which are? Red. Orange. Yellow. Green. Blue. Indigo. Violet. So really this question, hey, this question is really telling you which one will be higher and which one will be lower. So which will be the light on the top? The red and on the bottom? The violet. Newton. That's all he wants. So he wants to know which will be on the top and which will be on the bottom when they come out. Okay. Last part now. A red light source is shown on a diffraction gradient. So do you, you remember this when you have your light and then you have your grate and then what happens when the light hits the grate? It spreads out, yeah. So this is called n equals zero, and then this spot here, n equals one, and so on and so on. So let me just draw that down here again. This is the n equals one. Now what does he give you? He gives you this angle here, 36.5. What else does he say? And he also gives you how big the gratin is. He says the gratin distance is 1 times 10 to the 6 lines per meter. Now, if you go to your formula book, well, I'll write down the formula. This is the formula you need. It's, you, uh, is it in the formula book? It's not? Yeah, It'd be under light. Yeah, only snow and yeah. What page? Uh, you don't have this? No, you're right. You don't have this. Okay. So this is one you need to remember. Now, what's the N here? Uh, one. One. It's one. He's talking about this one. Now, what's the theta here? Now, he needs the, we need the D. The D is how big the grate is. Now, we don't quite have it. We almost have it. Read carefully. He says, here's our grate. And he says there are... 10 to the 6 lines per meter. So he doesn't tell me how big they are. He tells me how many I get per meter. But how many lines are there? There's 10 to the 6 lines per meter. So how much between each line? Well, it'd be 1 over 10 to the 6. Another way to think about it is this is 10 to the 6 per meter. So the unit is 1 over meter. And what do we want? A meter. meter. So just flip it. flip it. Now I'll give you a very simple example. If I said, if I said there are 100 lines per meter, so 100 lines per meter, how big is each line? Uh, Think about it, 100 per meter? What do we know has 100 in a meter? One, 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 uh, one it's it's centimeter. So if I say there's a hundred lines per meter, that means each line is a centimeter. If I say there's a thousand lines per meter, then each one is a yeah. millimeter. Yeah. Yeah. Thousand, isn't it? Thousand, thousand. Yeah. And then if I said there was a million, how big is a million? Yeah. Micrometer. And then a billion? Nanometer. Nanometer. Okay. So I have the D. 
10 to the minus 6. So 10 to the minus 6 goes here. Can you multiply it by this and tell me what you get? Thank you. What is it, Mike? Five point. Nine yeah. Times ten to the minus seven. Minus seven, seven meters. Yeah. Um. That is zero. Well, actually, I want to make it. That would be five nine four times ten to the minus nine meters. N nine is nano. So if you just want to write it this way, that's fine too. 594 nanometers. Okay. Last part now. Our last part, again, is so easy. He wants the two, um, look here. Look, he wants the two angles for n equals 1 and n equals 2 when you use violet light. And the wavelength for violet light, uh, we calculated earlier, didn't we? Or he gives it to us. Yeah, lambda equals 4.01 times 10 to the minus 7. Okay, what's the formula? It's n lambda equals d sine theta. Now, do we know the D? Uh, yes. Do we know the N? Yes. yes. Do we know the lambda? Yes. So we can get the theta. So you can say theta equals, if you want to rewrite it, N lambda over D S uh, sine, sine inverse. inverse. Now, when you do the first one, that is N is 1 and then, what's the D? We said it's 10 to the Minus 6, so what do you got here? Twenty three point six four. Correct. Okay, and then when you do the second one, all you need to do is change the N here to 2. And you should get 53.32. And he wants the difference in these angles. So please minus them and you will get... Yeah. It's the same. They just changed the light. What is it? 29.7. 29 